Faced with insurmountable challenges on Earth, some scientists have expanded the boundaries of their search. In 1976, Nobel Prize winning biologist Francis Crick advanced a radical alternative for the origin of life. Crick suggested that our planet was seeded with microscopic organisms, transported from another part of the universe by an alien civilization. This theory is called panspermia. Five years later, physicist Frederick Hoyle offered a modified version of panspermia when he theorized that strands of DNA were manufactured by an intelligence in a distant galaxy and then set adrift like dandelion seeds on a windy day. Some of this genetic material reached the Earth. Another version of the theory, popularized by the Mars rock, a meteorite discovered in Antarctica, contends that microbes evolved somewhere else in the galaxy and hitchhiked to Earth, attached to comets and asteroids. In some ways, you could argue that panspermia is really an abandonment of science because it places the problem beyond real examination. If science tells us that life probably didn't come into existence all by itself here on Earth, then it must have come from somewhere else. Even if it sounds like a bad 1950s horror movie, <laughs> it came from outer space. If I have difficulties forming life on planet Earth because, let's say, the atmosphere required is geologically implausible, or I can't get sufficient amounts of biologically relevant molecules, those problems are going to exist on any other planet where we postulate that life arose. We can't make them go away by moving the venue, you know, to another part of the galaxy. Bottom line, panspermia doesn't solve the problem of the origin of life, it just moves it to another locality. The shortcomings of panspermia have led some researchers to a theory that extends far beyond conventional astronomy, the multiverse. According to this hypothesis, ours is not the only universe. Instead, billions or trillions of universes were once generated by some unknown natural process. And as opportunities increased exponentially, impossible odds became probable. Until inevitably, over time, just the right combination of raw materials, environment, laws of nature, and a large dose of luck produce the molecules and biological machines required for the first living cell. In other words, within a vast theoretical ocean of universes, someone had to win the cosmic lottery, and it was us.